Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a moment to discover how snapshots can help us save different develop settings in Lightroom Classic and use them in Photoshop. Let's imagine that I've already made some edits to this image that I like, but I also want to try some other options. To have Lightroom Classic save these changes, I'll click the plus icon on the Snapshots panel to create a snapshot. Lightroom Classic saves all of the settings in a single entry in the Snapshot panel. Now we have the freedom to experiment. We can make additional edits with the security of knowing that we can quickly return to the snapshot state with a single click, rather than having to scroll through multiple states using the history panel. For the sake of time, we'll just make a simple change. I'll tap the black and white icon to convert the image to grayscale and click the plus icon again on the snapshots panel to save those settings as my second snapshot. But just imagine that we've made multiple changes. Now I can quickly compare the two versions of the image. Hovering the cursor over a snapshot will preview the snapshot and clicking on the snapshot will apply those settings. If I make another edit, here I'll just increase the shadow slider and I want to update my previously saved snapshot. I can right click or control click on Mac on the snapshot and choose update with current settings. I can also right click or control click on Mac and choose to rename a snapshot. One advantage of creating snapshots is that they can be saved within an image. If I need to hand off a raw file to someone and I want to include both this color and black and white snapshot, I can go to the library and then choose metadata, save metadata to file, which will save the snapshot information either within the file or in the case of a proprietary raw file, as an XMP file in the same folder, in which case you would want to hand off both the raw file and the XMP file to whomever you're collaborating with. Two tips, if you go to your catalog settings under metadata, if you've enabled the option to automatically write changes into XMP, then you shouldn't need to save the image. Just make sure that you're finished with your edits and then select another file so that Lightroom knows that you're done and then it will write the information to the file. And while snapshots are saved, the history will not be. All right, if I'm working with Photoshop, snapshots have another advantage. Lightroom Classic can hand off a raw photo as a smart object to Photoshop and the snapshots will be included. I'll choose Photo, Edit In, and select Open as Smart Object in Photoshop. Lightroom Classic creates a copy of the original RAW file and places that new copy into a new document. In the Layers panel, we can see the icon for the Smart Object layer. Now let's imagine that we've made a number of changes to our document. Maybe we've resized the Smart Object within it, we may have added a mask or clipped the image to another layer. Maybe we even added some text and now the client decides they want the photo in color. It's not a problem. You don't have to return to Lightroom Classic because the snapshots are in the copy of the raw file that was placed as a smart object. I'll select layer, smart objects, edit contents, and Photoshop is going to open the RAW file into Adobe Camera Raw. Now Camera Raw uses the same technology as Lightroom Classic's develop module, so all of the edits will be exactly the same. And we can click on the snapshot icon and select the color snapshot that we created in Lightroom Classic to quickly convert the file back to color using the highest quality RAW data. All right, when we're done, I'll close this. And if we choose File, and then save, the file will be saved by default as a TIFF file. Then we can close this document and because Lightroom Classic is still open, Photoshop will hand back the TIFF file which will automatically be added to the catalog. So here we can see we have our original and we have our new layered TIFF file that includes the copy of the smart object with its snapshots. I do want to be clear, the original RAW file and the copy of the raw file that's in the TIFF file now are no longer connected, meaning that I can make changes to the raw file, but that's not going to affect the copy of the file in Photoshop, 
and vice versa. If we make changes to the smart object in Photoshop, it won't have any effect on this original raw file in Lightroom Classic. Okay, five quick tips before we wrap up. One, if you want to quickly find all of your photos that have snapshots, we can click the metadata option in the filter bar and select snapshot status as the search criteria. Then we can choose between have snapshots or no snapshots. Two, you can also create a smart collection to find all of your photos that have snapshots. We'll click the plus icon and choose create smart collection. And then for criteria, you'll choose has snapshots and then select between is true or is false to quickly find your images. For tip number three, let's return to the develop module and tap the Y icon to enter before and after view. Unlike states in your history panel, you can't simply drag a snapshot into the before state in the develop module to compare states. You can, however, right click or control click on Mac on a snapshot and choose copy snapshot settings to before. Tip number four, when you save a snapshot, that snapshot is automatically made available in all virtual copies of the image. And tip number five, as an educator, I often take snapshots of the changes that I make to an image, and then I can click through them when I'm presenting to show my workflow in a clear and concise manner. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.